Praying on this land, we acknowledge the Narunga people, traditional custodians upon whose ancestral lands we meet, and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of Aboriginal people to country. Well, good morning and welcome to Worship with the Anglicans on the York Peninsula of South Australia. Today we are celebrating the 13th Sunday after Pentecost with the readings and propers for the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our service follows our usual pattern of the parts in yellow are congregational responses and you are invited to join in and sing the hymns. Please take time now to prepare yourself to spend some time with God. Glorious things of thee are spoken, Zion city of our God, he whose word cannot be broken, form thee for his own abode. On the rock of ages founded, what can shake, what can shake thy sure repose? With salvation's walls surrounded, Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. 
You shall love your neighbour as yourself. You alone 
O God, the fount of all wisdom, in the humble witness of the Apostle Peter, you have shown the foundation of our faith. Give us the light of your Spirit, that, recognising in Jesus of Nazareth the Son of the living God, we may be living stones for the building up of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from Exodus, chapter 1, beginning at verse 8. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labour. They built supply cities, Pithom, and Ramses for, the, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. Then the Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labour. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him, but if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives fear God, feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman, and the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three, three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river and while her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds reeds and set her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse this child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. And when the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, as she, because she said, I drew him out of the water. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A 
Chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and that all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of, gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. One of the things that uh, is important for us as Christians is to gain a firm grasp about what it is that is our message. You know, what do we say um, when someone asks us? And believe it or not, I think today's gospel is one of those passages that is quite superb for helping us to, to put things in, into context, uh, particularly with regard to, um, well, salvation and faith. And if you read the story, we begin with Jesus asking them, now what are people saying? Who am I? Who do they think I am? And you get those lovely things. Prophet, John the Baptist, you know, a whole series of things that come back and point to Jesus as, a, as an exemplary holy man of God figure. You know, let's not get too frightened with this understanding that you know, here, here he is. He, he is there as a holy person. And, um, and that, I think, is the beginning stage of faith. If no one has has heard anything of Jesus other than as a swear word, well then what are they going to understand and what can they do about it? And unfortunately I think many in our churches are at that stage. They have heard about Jesus. They know uh, what people said about him. They know that he was supposedly um, a good man. He was probably crucified on the cross, some stories about resurrection, but it's, it's, it's a sort of a history, factual thing. Uh, and it is where one would say, um, if you know, is faith in the head, faith through knowledge. And we have this tendency, and it, it, it is a little bit of a concern for me, is we have a tendency to, to put down um, the idea of uh, Christian teaching is about giving people facts. Um, I know some of my brothers are very good teachers and they will take a passage and they'll go through it verse by verse and explain what each verse means and bring people to some sort of understanding um, um, through that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I am concerned that that takes us into a position of, you know, to grow in faith is to grow in knowledge. And Jesus certainly didn't let the disciples alone there. He turns to them and says, now who do you say that I am? 
and that idea of a personal response or a personal understanding um, takes it from the head to the heart. Who do you, what do you believe about me? And you know, you've known me. Who have you known? And let's let's put it this way: that it's not enough to know the facts about Jesus, but rather to know Him. And through the Holy Spirit, and through our understanding that He is resurrected, and through the understanding that He walks with us and talks with us, all those sorts of things. We've got this ability then to know not of Christ, but to know Christ. And Peter had put all the facts together and then said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and that is an incredible step forward. Because it's, it's a heartfelt understanding. I know this person, and this person is God's son. And so through this heart knowledge, then Jesus slowly reveals to them what that means. And indeed, when you follow the stories in the Gospels, the next stories are about the transfiguration, where Jesus takes Peter and James and John up to the high mountain and shows them exactly what that means. Bit scary. Peter was was frightened. But it is only when we find that divinity of God in Jesus that we can really truly say that we believe, that we have faith, that we understand. And it is, um, I guess, taking our knowledge and bringing our experience of God that brings faith to fruition. You know, we are to be prepared to die for Christ. Indeed, those who knew him best, all the apostles, only, only John didn't give that ultimate sacrifice of his life. And even so, John lived a life that ended in exile. And um, we can only do that if we have a full, careful understanding of Jesus as Son of God, as the Messiah, as the bringer or sal the salvation bringer to our world. It brings a question to us, which is something that um, we have to ask ourselves and indeed take uh, maybe a little bit of liberty and ask of others. Have you found Jesus? Do you know this person? Are you, is your prayer life such that God is there? You're not just giving a shopping list, but rather that you experience his presence. And until we can say yes to that, then we haven't grasped the fullness of faith. Salvation, yes, that comes through, through confession and belief. But salvation in its own, fullness comes through the experience of the Holy Spirit and that's the essence of some of the Romans really. you know, we're not just a collection of individuals but rather we're bound together in the body of Christ through the Holy Spirit and as such God gifts us and brings us into different different um, experiences actions activities and where I think the church is failing is that we're failing to be what we can be because we fail to know who we can know. And I find that really sad. If you've experienced the fullness of Christ as, as the person, the, third, the second person of the Trinity, the, the divine one, 
the divine human one. Well, once you've discovered that, then it's very hard to go back and just rattle off a set of facts. So I guess it's my prayer that each of us will find this risen Christ not as um, an answer in a Wikipedia, but rather as a person who, with whom we relate and with whom we share. So here's our challenge. Let's try and find out what we are lacking and ask God to bring that to us as we move forward. We ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We, we believe, believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through his prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the Church. A prayer for our diocese. God of hope and love, you have called us to be the body of Christ. Inspire us in the Diocese of Loughborough to worship with joy and energy, serve with compassion and be welcoming of others in our communities so that we all will know the good news of Jesus to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, hear our prayers for your world and your church. The response after Jesus in your mercy is, hear our prayer. You are the Prince of Peace. Bring peace to your broken, bleeding world, that war may cease and your people live in safety and security. Jesus in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the wisdom of God. Give insight to the leaders of the nations that they may govern wisely and your people enjoy dignity and justice. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the saviour of the world. Increase the faith of your people that we may burn with love for you and proclaim your gospel in all the world. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the way, the truth and the life. Lead us in your way and guide us in your truth that we may live in love for you and for each other. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the close companion of the lonely. Keep company with the friendless, that they may feel your loving presence and know that they are not alone. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
You are the comfort of the brokenhearted. Sit with the sorrowing that in their distress they may know your consolation and be comforted. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the healer of the suffering. Bring release to those in anguish of body, mind or spirit, that in their pain they may know your peace. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the resurrection and the life. Raise us out of death to life that with Peter and all who have recognised you as the Messiah, we may d dwell forever in your presence. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Simon Peter proclaimed you as our Messiah, Jesus, help us to proclaim you as our Lord. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you.
His perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for all his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and saying Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup and again giving you thanks he gave it to his disciples saying drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew our 
us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour, glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trouble, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <laughs> Great 
sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept that sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you this, this day and always.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will he laugh and just cry. I'm so by and by. by. Feel a little prayer will turn him. Talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Us, Have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. And by. Feel a little prayer will turn you in. No need of fires burning. Find a little talk with Jesus. Jesus, we